Ann Arbor, Michigan. High noon Eastern time. Big noon kickoff on Fox. And boy, it is a big one. Fox has the Penn State at Michigan game. This is going to kick off your day. Some of you will be watching this before it's even noon. It's 11 a.m. kickoff in the central time zone. And you know there's a lot of chirping around this building. There's a lot of chirping about Penn State pulling the outright upset here. They're about a touchdown underdog, depending on where you look. Most places this line's at seven right now. And the chirping is understood. Penn State's a good team. Hey, I saw what they did to Auburn. They turned Auburn inside out in every which way but Sunday when we saw them down at Auburn. Really good team. We've had them highly rated in the JP poll all year. But listen, for them to pull this upset, I just need to remind you before we get into the preview how historic that would be. Penn State, according to Stats and Info, has lost 13 straight road games versus top five teams. You want to know when the last time was they went on the road against the top five team and won? It was 1994, and it was against Michigan. Baseball was on strike that year, and that is the last year that Penn State got a win this big on the road. Not saying it can't happen. I'm just saying before you nonchalantly or flippantly choose your wording, just throw out those predictions. Understand, this would be a big deal, a very big deal. Also, these teams were in the same division, so you're jockeying for position within the division there. That's tough to say, by the way. I would never try that again. I got a gross, gross stat. Sometimes we do padlock stats on the show. No, it is gross stat Tuesday. And here's the grossness of the stat. Michigan's played six teams. It's a great stat, but it's not gross so far. That's just a fact. Here's the gross part. Out of the half dozen teams Michigan has played, five of them are 98th or worse in scoring offense. And if that's not bad enough for you, four of them are 121st or worst in scoring offense. Now, when I had this presented to me today, I took the tact that a Michigan fan should take. And I looked across the table and I said, yeah, that's because all of them have played us. When you got a game against us baked into your statistical output, of course you're going to be bad. True, not that bad, friends. You got Colorado State and Hawaii and UConn lined up there. Iowa, Indiana, it's just tomato can after tomato can offensively. And you got Maryland thrown in there. And that game was 34 to 27. So there are a couple of irresistible force meeting immovable object type statistical profiles in this game. And you know how much I love WrestleMania 3. So uh, that was Hogan Andre, for those of you unfamiliar. So J.J. McCarthy, you know he leads FBS. He leads all of college football in completion percentage. Good for J.J. McCarthy. Dude's throwing it around at a 78.3% completion percentage rate. That's phenomenal. You can win all day with that. That's the irresistible force. What's the immovable object? Well, what has Penn State done defensively? Okay, it's all about matchups, right? Styles make fights. Penn State defense holding opposing quarterbacks to 49.6% completion percentage. Obviously, as Meemaw would tell you, and I would reiterate, that means something has to give Saturday. Now, sometimes it's just you split the difference. Sometimes you find out that someone's stats have been inflated off of inferior competition. Sometimes you just get a great football game. That's the first little statistical profile that I wanted to bring to your attention. Here are two other keys that I'm watching in this game that I think will decide it. Penn State running the ball. Now, we say that all the time, and I want to congratulate Penn State so far. They are 33rd. They got the 33rd best rushing offense in the country now. That may not sound special to you if you've watched Penn State attempt to run the ball over the past few years. That is as night and day as it gets. They have been horrible trying to run the ball. And it's not that they weren't crying. It's not that they weren't committed to it. They were just bad at it. And so this year, nine run plays already of 20 yards or more. So they've had the explosivity in their run game. Uh, Like I said, they're top 35 in just total rushing statistics. But also, here's another one of those counterpoints. As good as they've been, or as improved as they've been on the ground, Michigan defensively, sixth best run defense in college football. I wouldn't call Penn State an irresistible force. I would call them a greatly improved force. There's the immovable object over there. So we got two statistical profiles that absolutely have gone into making these teams what they are so far this year, and you got the perfect counterpoint across the ball. Thirdly, and this is one that even Michigan fans are talking about, pass rush. Is it going to show up? It did last year. We haven't really needed it so far this year to win a game. Is it going to show up for us if we need it? 
I was looking at some third down numbers. Third down's always huge in these games, or it usually is at least. That Michigan pass rush, when you get Penn State into those third downs, and this is not, this is not an offense that lives off the explosive play. They've got to live off third down conversion rate, especially in a game like this. I think they'll have to. Last year, that matchup would be decidedly anti-Penn State because you had the pass rush specialist over on the Michigan side. This year, it kind of remains to be seen. If you don't have the ability to affect Sean Clifford enough, Penn State could put up like a 65 or 70% third down completion percentage Saturday on you, and that could be the difference in the game. Now, as much as I'm talking about Uncle Sean being able to move the sticks on third down through the air, here's an important point. And it sounds insulting, but it's just reality. When Sean Clifford, Penn State quarterback, when Sean Clifford throws fewer than 29 passes, Penn State is 17 and 1. You want to know what happens when he throws it 35 times or more? He is 1 and 5. Excuse me, they are 1 and 5. So that's a Jesse padlock stat for you. Producer Jesse, Penn State Jesse, he wants as few throws as necessary from Sean Clifford in the offense there. Let's take a look at what the model thinks. You see the Vegas number. It's Michigan minus seven. I've got, um, I've got some conflict in my heart about this one because as much as we got Michigan minus seven there, the model likes Michigan even more. We've been high on Michigan for a while. That's why the JP poll has had them rated top five for quite a while. The model has Michigan minus eight. So what am I to do? Because I have felt all week and I still feel that the number's just, just a smidge too high. I think it's just a little bit too luxurious to be given that many points to Penn State, especially one I've already seen go on the road, albeit against inferior competition in Auburn, but one I saw go on the road and handle inferior competition. The current odds to win the Big Ten Championship, Ohio State, a runaway favorite, and then it's Michigan, and then it's Penn State. And this game, obviously, will greatly reshuffle the odds that we're looking at on our screen right now. I think Michigan's going to win. I think Penn State's going to cover. If you're forcing me to take a side on this, I think it's going to be a great four-quarter game. So give me Michigan to win. Give me Penn State to cover. It should be noted, because I told him, you're not just going to tell me this in private. You tell me your prediction, Jesse. I'm putting it on the record. Producer Jesse has Penn State winning outright and winning by double digits. Your podcast didn't die. I just wanted to give a little dramatic pause for effect, because if I cut that video and Michigan ends up scalding them Saturday, that's what I'm posting on Twitter. Not my pick. I didn't lose. It's Jesse that will lose. It's all of us that will win. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't leave yet. Don't leave yet. Make sure you like the video and please subscribe to the channel. Not just for me. That's how we keep this entire thing free.